Seymour Island off the coast of Antarctica has been one of the best places for finding fossils coming from Antarctica. This is especially true of Eocene fossils coming just after the KPG extinction where the giant rock came down and killed off the non-avian dinosaurs. A new fossil from Seymour Island though really helps to suggest that it wasn't necessarily, oh, the dinosaurs are just helpless in their environment now as tiny little birds. And that's specifically because of a new fossil which is too incomplete to be named, but coming from a terror bird or a forest racket. Now, early forest rackets are known from the Eocene, including a paper just last month that described an Eocene fossil of a forest racket that was still fairly small, maybe around 12 pounds. Meanwhile, this one would have been among the largest, including things like Forus rachos. It would have been an eight foot tall predator bird that would have ran around with a giant beak killing whatever small mammals were around. And that seemed to have worked for it. And it's also really interesting because it highlights just how different Antarctica would have been at that time. Unfortunately, the fossil isn't super complete. Like I mentioned earlier, it couldn't be named and there are multiple versions of it, one of which is heavily damaged, but the other one is still pretty complete and it's identifiable to a forest racket. Just, you can tell based on the large shape of the claw and the way it's very hooked. There's also been research showing they probably use this clock slightly similar to the way Dromaeus or dinosaurs did, being able to use it to pin prey and then tear apart with their beak, or in the case of the Dromaeus or dinosaurs, the raptor dinosaurs using their teeth for the same thing. And based on what we know, this would have been the top predator. There's a few herbivorous mammals that would have been around that could have gotten up to moderate sizes, not necessarily huge, but you're talking, you know, 20 to maybe 30 pounds or around 10 kilograms. But that wouldn't have been the only prey available. For example, in modern day South America, you have things like rheas, which are ratites. They're related to things like ostriches, but not quite as large. And we have evidence of those also being present in Antarctica at this time. This really helps to highlight how much warmer of a world it would have been and the kind of diversity that Antarctica would have supported at that time. Of course, eventually the ice ages developed and that led to our own evolution, but also the loss of many of the diverse species that existed in Antarctica. There's a reason why nowadays it's pretty much only penguins inland and only at very certain times of the year when certain species are breeding inland away from the sea. Still, this animal would have been the top predator in its environment only 17 million years after that impact, which really helps to highlight that no, it wasn't just a foregone conclusion that the mammals were going to take over. There were still birds, specifically also birds being dinosaurs, that were top predators in their environments. It's not like some kind of just giant impact happened and everything became homogenized around mammal domination. There was a lot of competition that was still occurring and a lot of diversity that we are hopefully going to understand more, especially as we start looking for more fossils around Antarctica and southern parts of South America.